All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to take our analysis of our simple program or buffer overflow susceptible program here and actually overflow that buffer and observe what happens in a debugger. Um, if you miss the analysis of the program, won't repeat it here, check out the video, the first video in this playlist. So let's jump right in. I'm going to use WinDebug as my debugger. Really doesn't matter what debugger you use here. We just want to run the program and be able to pass the you know, the data via the command line argument to overflow the buffer. Now, in order to do that, we'll go to File, uh, Launch Executable Advanced, and you can see we need the executable, which is our, over, you know, our vulnerable program here, and then our arguments. Now, the argument I, you know, specially crafted, these are 20 A's, and then these last four B's, each character is a byte. So, in that last video, we calculated that we needed 20 bytes to then overflow the return address. So what we should see when this program goes to return from main is that EIP, the program should crash with uh, four, hex 4242 in EIP. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll say debug. This will load the program into memory. Okay, so we have line prefixes on, and what we can use that for is just to determine what virtual address our main entry or you know our, our main method is going to be located at we want that in order to set the breakpoint and for visual studio compiled code typically that's at the beginning of the dot text section so 401 000 uh, 1000 hex is typically the beginning of the dot text section in memory so here we go now we look at our program uh, however, you can look at the you know the different modules that are loaded in memory with with WinDebug. That's the lm command, and you'll see that we're actually at an address of uh, forty thousand hex, not four hundred thousand hex. So that's ASLR, address space layout randomization, that ensures that our program, when loaded in memory, those higher bits of the address get randomized so that it's not consistently at the same location. So what that means is we have to adjust our breakpoint. Right, because we're not at 400,000 hex, we're at 40,000 hex. So we have to set the breakpoint to 41000. Right, and I already had that set, so that's why this says breakpoint zero defined. But typically, when it's not set, set it on that address, it'll say breakpoints been defined, breakpoint is set. Um, okay, so now we can say G to go, and you'll see that we are now at the beginning of our main method. So I'm going to skip ahead. Let's go down to, let's see, this LEA or, or this, this one here. Um, there used to be a run to cursor. Perhaps there's not. So what I'll do is I'll just set another breakpoint. Paste that in. Okay. You can see there the breakpoint is set. Now if we go, execution should go to that spot. And the LEA into ECX. EVP minus 10 hex. So that's loading. Remember, we, we discussed in the last video that the, the beginning of our buffer was at an offset of minus 10 hex from EVP. So this is the address for the beginning of that buffer. So we've got the register window open here. We can see there is the address. So I'm going to copy that and we'll do, we'll do a DB. And what you'll see is that there's the beginning of our buffer. And if we were to count these bytes out, we have 10 bytes that were set to, were, were zeroed out from the mem set. We have two bytes that are just arbitrary, right? We really don't know that those, this data here represents nothing. It was left over from whatever used the stack previously. And then we have our, uh, our hex uh, 64, which is our, our int 100. So that's that local variable. Let's see, that we that I defined here. So that's int A. Okay, now this is our call to stir copy. And so once we step over, and I'm gonna use a dot CLS to clear the screen here, and we'll dump from that same location. You'll see there is all of our hex six one. So I was I was wrong earlier. I was thinking uppercase A, uppercase B, this is lowercase A, lowercase B. So hex 61, um, if it were uppercase, it would have been hex 42. You can see though, all of the bytes overwrote and now we're into you know, what, what I say is the return address if a calculation is correct. So how can we confirm that? Well, 
In this case, I think it's just the ZZ will step until we get to the RET. And once we get to the RET, and if we look at the top of the stack, you know, I'm going to clear the screen, we'll do that again. The RET is going to take what's ever on the top of the stack, move it into or tell EIP to go there, and then remove that data from the stack. So there's our hex 62626262, right? We've, we've now confirmed that our analysis of the stack is correct and that we've taken control of this program. We've controlled the flow by, in this case, directing it to someplace arbitrary. So if we follow the RET, we should see that the program crashes. It went to this location, and that's an invalid memory address. So there's nothing more to it. Okay, uh, what would happen if you did not get the program to go to this address or this location? Well, then you just have to look at the stack, look at the program, figure out where you were off. What did you miscalculate? And you should be able to then determine what your what your where your miscalculation is by just looking at that layout in memory, looking at the stack, looking at the return address, and figuring out where that buffer went wrong. Uh, now, again, mitigations, and so we'll talk about in the next video here getting into the stack cookie or the stack guard, and how that does a couple of important things to help mitigate the basic buffer overflow. Okay. So, any questions, comments, please leave them in the video. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next one.